Welcome to SciTech Biosciences SpectraLearn video on the basics of flow cytometry. If you're new to flow cytometry, this video will walk you through the foundational concepts by highlighting key applications, providing an overview of how the technology works, and an example of the data output. But first, what is flow cytometry? The word flow refers to the sample flowing through the fluidic system. Cyto means cell, and metry means measurement. So, at its core, flow cytometry is a method for measuring multiple parameters on cells or particles as they traverse through a fluidic system. Why use flow cytometry? The power of flow cytometry lies in its ability to identify, enumerate, and phenotype cells as a high-throughput single-cell technology. For example, identifying different types of cells within complex samples, such as distinguishing immune cells from other cells, calculating the frequency of these cell populations within the entire sample, and assessing their phenotype, such as quantifying expression of surface markers or detecting specific transcription factors within the cell. A critical tool for both research and clinical applications, flow cytometry is most commonly used for immunophenotyping, in which one can identify cell biomarkers, follow disease progression, or examine treatment response in fields such as immuno-oncology or infectious disease. The versatility of this technology extends beyond the analysis of immune cells to include samples such as engineered cell lines, bacteria, and even subcellular particles such as exosomes. How does flow cytometry work? The cytometer detects and measures fluorescent signals originating from fluorophores, which absorb light within a specific wavelength range known as the excitation, and emit light at longer wavelengths, known as the emission. A fluorophore reagent is mixed with a sample in a single cell suspension to specifically tag a cellular target. Then its fluorescence on each cell is measured by the flow cytometer. We can analyze the data, knowing that the intensity of the fluorescent signal corresponds with the amount of the cellular target. Fluorophores include fluorescent protein reporters, dyes that bind to cellular components such as DNA, or molecules conjugated to target specific antibodies. When multiple fluorochromes are used simultaneously, mathematical calculations like compensation or unmixing are applied to distinguish each unique fluorophore's emission profile. What happens in the flow cytometer? Let's trace the path of cells through the various components of the flow cytometer. First, the sample is taken up by the cytometer and enters the fluidic system. The cells are aligned single file in the flow cell, then pass through each of the lasers at the interrogation point. As each cell is interrogated, photons of light are collected from a few sources. Forward scatter is the measurement of laser light scattered by the cell in the forward direction and is correlated with cell size. Side scatter is a measurement of laser light scattered at a 90 degree angle and provides insights into the granularity or complexity of cells. The light emitted from the fluorophores are directed to fluorescent detectors with the number and arrangement depending on the cytometer configuration. Photons are then converted to electronic signals and processed into data, which is displayed in real time within data plots and saved to an FCS file for subsequent analysis. On a flow cytometer analyzer, this data serves as the endpoint of the sample, and the cells are deposited into a waste tank for disposal. In contrast, cell sorters have the capability to identify and direct cells of interest 
into collection tubes or plates, facilitating their use in downstream, in vivo, or in vitro applications, such as single-cell genomics profiling. How is data analyzed? Once the data is recorded, it is typically analyzed using an analysis software. Here we show data from Cytec's Seafloor TBMNK kit, stained on whole blood and acquired using a three-laser Northern Lights system. We first identify single cells using forward scatter, then can differentiate granulocytes, monocytes, and lymphocytes using side scatter and CD45. We can further investigate by drawing a gate and displaying the gated cells to examine markers of interest, such as using CD19 and CD3 to differentiate B cells and T cells, and the CD8 versus CD4 T cell subsets. For higher parameter datasets, unsupervised data visualization methods can be used to identify cell subsets with similar expression patterns. This concludes a brief overview of the basics of flow cytometry. If you'd like to learn more about using full-spectrum cytometry, consider attending SciTech's online training lecture.